This is Jed McKay, and you're listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 250, Rebecca. I know, (laughs) right? I had to highlight it. I was like, how is this 250 and we didn't do anything special? I think it's going to be quite a special um, episode. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's been timed in Welcome Loonies. You revealed, you know. (laughs) That's true. Um, this, This is listeners, our moonshine. It's Moon Knight Volume Nine, Issue Five that we're covering. As you heard, it's going to be—it's a new comic book review. Uh, you know, it's a great series. As Rebecca, you've said, um, and and co-hosting is High Press of Rebecca. Um, Hi, hello. hello. Uh, we jumped the gun there a bit, but yeah, there's plenty to plenty to talk about. Plenty of listener feedback, so that's always great. Um, before we get into any of that, though, at the top of each show, a big shout out to our sponsors. Our Petrunis, Top Tier Petrunis, Tombs and Lurk Music by Drew Tombs, Fringe Night by Daniel Doing, CLZ Comics by Collectors.com and Dreamland Comics from Schoenberg, Illinois. And of course, all our Petrunis. Uh, welcome Thank aboard. Mm. So Rebecca, yes, my gosh, it's 2.50, but we do have, I mean, this is this is a big issue, isn't it? It's a big issue. It's a big chunky one. And mm. it's dealing with stuff that I have personally been wanting to see in Moon Knight for a while, so mm. very excited. I'm very, yeah, I'm very keen to to get your thoughts as well because, uh, yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed it as well. We'll get into all that loonies um, before we do. Uh, just uh, you know, pull the brakes, Ray, just a little. Uh, yeah, Rebecca, um, uh, the the Moon Knight teaser. <laughs> yeah, the Moon Knight teaser. Yeah, hey, bro, let's you, talk yeah. about it. I'm very excited <laughs> for the show still. Yes, but that accent is so bad. Yeah, that was a big <laughs> that thing. Like hurt my brain. I I get that you will think it's cute British, like, but if I talk like that, then I'm worried about things. <laughs> um, like I I have read everyone's potential explanations for it. Mm-hmm. I think that even if this is just the accent that we're using for one of the altars or for main thing, I will get we'll all get used to it, right? It was yeah. just we weren't expecting it. Um, I, I will still laugh about it. Yeah, uh, and uh, expect everyone to do terrible impressions of it. Like I was at a comic <laughs> convention for the weekend with, obviously yeah. in Britain, uh-huh. and like everyone around the table was just doing it. Like everyone oh, was. No, it was, it, really. It was, but but to be fair, like somebody said about the Bane accent. Yes. Like if you're doing it, that shows a level of interest in the show. That's true. So like I'm going to take it as a as a blessing that there's this hook to talk about, <laughs> and try not to get too tied up with like um like how bad it is. Um, yeah. And I, and also whoever said that Oscar Isaac has to be bad at something. Oh yeah, um, that was and yeah. Clearly, whoever that was, yeah. big thumbs up. I, I like the um, I like Lena's um one of the loony listeners. I like their explanation of it um did you read that basically I, yeah i yeah. did i that was that's definitely my favorite mm. of the explanation and yes. it makes sense but yes. i'm not convinced that okay. the tv who are would... that advanced yeah that's true so i mean so for loony listeners that that aren't aware of the post that happened um so of course as you can tell rebecca um a little shaken at the the accent that was revealed uh, as as were many people uh, but lena mentioned that uh, for did systems uh, it's not uncommon as well for um, other alters to have a different accent but you know obviously not necessarily be perfect at, at the accent as well um, yeah because not their born accent Mm -hmm. so like um and often like you know i can think i'm doing a great american accent and like zoe will turn around and laugh at me (laughs) so um you know like what we hear our voices like when i hear my voice in my head i do not hear what i hear when i listen to the podcast okay oh yeah yeah which is uh, a common thing yeah take it as that so like I, i i i hope that the tv execs are that um aware of how mm. things could happen because yeah. i think that is definitely the neatest it's definitely the, the most exciting explanation for me because yes. it 
it implies a thoughtfulness about DID that we'd all like to see. Yeah. And also <laughs> Oscar Isaac not being bad at anything. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, like, which always excites me. Yeah. Well, um, well... so, I mean, I, I hope that's the way. I mean, I've seen other people say mm -hmm. that's just going to be Jake Saxon. Um, mm. Just that, you know, like hand waving that it is just a British accent. Uh, on the cockney side yeah. um i saw somebody asking if it was a south african accent which just oh. shows me just how bad the accent is <laughs> <laughs> that is shocker uh yeah definitely not but a south I, african I like yeah. it's caused a lot of conversation around moon Knight that isn't um i'm trying to do this without swearing sure. um, oh, you can swear. i'll just say without yeah okay i keep forgetting which podcast i can swear oh, yeah. on. there isn't sort of asshole behavior yeah like you know we could be debating levels of violence and levels of this and levels that's of that. totally that's totally been forgotten hasn't it that, that was a it's totally like just been hand waved and everyone's yeah. excited by the action we saw the costumes we saw yeah um you know possible easter eggs but the big and then these accents and yeah. then like who you think could be playing still yes. and and like whether they've changed mark to be sort of um archaeologist mm -hmm, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Uh, i don't you know who, yeah. who knows we, i mean we've, we've seen so little we've seen what 30 seconds i know it's only 30 seconds yeah you know like yeah we've got a long road to go exactly and... but i'm very excited that it was the first one up <laughs> it implies it is the next show after the fight oh okay so... yeah i've heard maybe she hulk might be because i thought that well if they played them in the other order so i mm. don't know if they would do I mean, oh, I don't God. mind. I don't know. Yeah, but they they did Moon Knight then She Hulk when they were doing the so hope I I don't know. But I'm yeah. going still with the Moon Knight's the next one. Okay, and and look, Rebecca, come on, you're you're procrastinating. Come on, give us an act. Give us a give us a Cockney accent. No, you did first. <laughs> no, yeah, you did first. I'll first. Okay, cool. Uh, so, Lo Looney listeners, this shows you just how um how far far we how it could be. Yeah. So, look, all I can think of is Hello, Gavna. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> now, I've actually got the line written out. Oh, right? you? okay. Yeah. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Yeah. And I don't think that's a particularly good one. I've done better. <laughs> but yeah, I can, I can tell. I mean, again, depending on how often you come across the English accent, I mean, there's a distinct difference there, Rebecca. I mean, actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that because you weren't doing the, the Cockney that accent. But... Really <laughs> but, no, but I mean, your your natural accent is very different from it's the... It's pretty um... received pronunciation with a little bit of Northern, if you're mm. particularly aware of it. But yeah, I was brought up in London, so actually, okay. <laughs> if yeah. he is going Cockney, that's closer to what my born accent would have been. But I was okay. brought up with parents who were from all over the place, so I don't... I, I can do it better than that, but maybe we'll do it each time I appear. I'll see if I get better and better. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Is that, is that a cockney? Is, is that a cockney? A little bit. <laughs> um, I'll do yours. What's like me, Gav? <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, gosh. If Oscar Isaac did that accent as well, as well uh, I think I'd be uh, I'd be uh, up in arms too. Uh, but, no, ex excellent. As you said, well, Rebecca, there's, there's plenty to, to look forward to it. And also, 30 seconds uh, is only what we've been given um we've covered this we had a great discussion with noel and and yeah, Ryan. So good. um so check it out if you haven't already and there are plenty of thoughts there but uh yeah i, d I just wanted to get your thoughts rebecca i.e in particular um the accent because yeah. that kind of stuck out like a sore thumb uh <laughs> i'm here for my expertise in british accents and judaism this week <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of yeah, which yeah. Mm, we do have a juicy a new comic book review for you, loony listeners. It's our Moonshine. As mentioned, um, Moon Knight Volume 9, Issue 5. It's subtitled Horoscope, which... Should uh, have given the game away, really. It gave the game, yeah, didn't it? Um, I, I read that when I first opened going, okay, I wonder what this kind of entails. But, yeah, luckily I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> Released November 17th, 2021. Um you know where this is leading, Rebecca. I'm probably going to ask you about the bare bones. Uh, writer... I'll feed your bare bones. <laughs> Yay! Writer Jed McKay, penciler uh, Alessandro Capuccio, colorist Rochelle Rosenberg, letterer VCs Corey Petit, um, and editor Tom Bravort. And we have cover artist uh, Steve McNiven and Frank D'Armada. Uh, that was 
with the regular cover showing the chains, which is quite appropriate for the you know usually Rebecca the the you know, yeah co- covers sometimes feedback. yeah so uh, so that's good uh, but there are other variant covers Arthur Adams and Dean White there's one from E J Sue and Maria Wolf and Mike Spicer uh, so so currently available uh, in floppy format and in digital as well so in, in variant 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 format and regular format all that sort of stuff um now learning listeners if you haven't heard what we usually do run through the credits done that tick uh we go through a summary a bare bones uh just to let you know what this story was about in case you haven't read it but you just want to kind of get gist of it um and a little bit of a change up here rebecca um i thought we'd just like maybe focus on like five key moments um, but we can always okay. still, of course, like, you know, <laughs> bounce around with, with writing, all the other aspects, art. Tell me that now. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I see that you have actually written copious notes here. Uh, I'm not, 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 yeah, yeah, not, not discounting them. Don't worry. Um, they're, they're very, yeah, very funny. I think most of it under your themes, so that's fine. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, and then we'll... we'll rate it with a, a moon rating, uh, the Connishu's rating system, the one and only... The yep. true, the yes, so, patented by Connishu, I'm sure. Uh, so Rebecca and I will give a rating there. So uh, Rebecca, if you'd be so kind, uh, I have scribbled together something here um, to tell us all about horoscope. In two parallel threads, <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> uh, Mark is in therapy with Doctor Sturman, trying to uncover the core of his unhappiness, as well as. And he's also on the hunt for a lead that Terry brings to him. Terry tells Mark that it's Soldier who's the villain taunting him. He takes him to an apartment across the street where Moon Knight discovers surveillance equipment and a photo of Soldier in his former days as a Hydra goon stroke of Soldier. The sessions with Dr. Sturman in the recent past reveal that Mark hasn't been totally honest with the Doctor. And she probes him to look deeper within himself to discover what it is that makes him unhappy. Uh, Mark reveals the relationship with his father as well as the path he chose that has ultimately led to ostracization uh, from both his family and friends. Back in the present, Moon Knight decides to investigate further, drops in to see Soldier's mum at her apartment where they have a cordial conversation. I mean, we think it's cordial, yes. right? Yeah, we because there's muff- we're not sure. Uh, but there are muffins, so let's. I will let, allow that. This soon leads Moon Knight to where Soldier is and he finds him chained to a radiator with a bomb set to explode. The mystery villain taunts Moon Knight and tries to force him to choose, leave Soldier to die or free him and have both of them perish in the bomb blast. Despite Soldier's protestations, Moon Knight perseveres and manages to free Soldier uh, and himself just before the bomb destroys everything. In the rubble, Moon Knight meets face to face with the villain who's been taunting him for so long. It's Zodiac. Yeah. Ray has put the killer. I think we'll oh. just say the anarchist lunatic. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. I mean, just he's... Because, he's so just... we can separate from the actual serial killer. Oh, Zodiac. yes, of course. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, true. No, no, he's a bit of everything. Yeah, in, in yeah, the comics. I, just, I think yeah. it's hard not to write Zodiac for serial killer mm. and then I'm just teasing you. Yeah. You know I can't get to tease you. Of I'll course, never have of course. any criticism of what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah big big reveal there. Um so yeah I mean Rebecca overall first uh impressions before we kick off into some details what what did you make of this issue? Uh I loved it. Loved mm. everything about it. Um it's dealt with some stuff I've always wanted them to really dig into in Moon Knight and uh, give me faith we might uh dig into it a bit more. Um, I thought it was, uh, I mean, look, I chuckled at how obscure the villain is because mm-hmm. like, I think from Jed saying everyone have a guess, I, we all knew it was going to be someone like ridiculously obscure. Yes. Um, uh, I, I, I guessed it probably wouldn't be, um, soldier from the preview, Okay. but the, the yeah. chance that it might be, um, mm-hmm. I, I think there's some really interesting, I think it's been extremely well thought about so that a lot of these themes reflect one another and play into one another and and uh i think that's always something commendable i i it just came across as more than just uh reading a comic there's stuff to think about there 
And I'm glad they got sensitivity readers for the Judaism stuff, which if you didn't know, he did. He got some fellow comic writers who mm-hmm. were Jewish to uh, Fantastic. go through it. So. Yeah, no, I, I share basically those thoughts as well. That was a very strong issue. Um, yeah, I get a sense of it. I haven't got my head wrapped around it um, totally yet, but what, what you were saying, Rebecca, about how there is a really smart way that things are interweaving and paralleling and, um, you know, between Soldier and Mark and stuff, uh, which you can I can sense, which is really cool. And, and once I do a reread and go through it, um, they'll become a lot more apparent. But there's that, there's a sense that, yeah, that, that there is this um, uh, just smart writing from, from Jed McKay. Yeah, uh, but somebody's thought about it. Yes, very thoughtful. Yeah, turning them out. I mean, this is definite... You can see both the arc, but also like how carefully he's dropped in some of the stuff about when Mark actually opens up to Dr. Sturm. And it's right at this point where we need to see it. Mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. why we got the Tigra one last time. It's because that's it's kind of cracked open that door. Yes, it has. For be- him. It has because, and, it, and, yeah, yeah, sorry. No, I'm just saying like there's, there's, there's just so much thoughtfulness yep. about these issues. You know, and we like... We, the soldier one that we thought was kind of almost the throwaway issue yes um i mean it still was lighter than some of the others Mm -hmm. but it introduced soldier because you need to care about him a little bit or you need to at least believe he could be the baddie Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for half an issue and then have this like what's mark actually what's the decision mark's going to make here so yeah it it definitely bleeds in well with um because there is almost a very similar theme in issue four with with Tiger, as you're saying, <laughs> Rebecca, but it was more about the mask, and that's alluded to again in this yeah, issue. Yeah, I think it was for me. It was very much that's him taking that first step to admitting it, and then mm. he can do it when, once Doctor Sturman kind of pushes him to that point. Yeah, then he can do that as well. And a friend of mine was pointing out that I think Terry's in the very first panel of the very first issue, so that's kind of ah oh. little um, little how this all plays out. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering what. We have in store for for Shannon because I hardly seen Shannon in in the mix, yeah. but um, yeah, but certainly I mean that that was a big thing. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the thing about unmasking and that that really powerful image at the end of issue four where you just see Mark's face and this is the reason why I wear the mask. I don't want to see myself. Basically, there's there's a lot of like self loathing uh, and that's carried and then on. This issue, there's also a lot of self reflection mm-hmm. along with the loathing. So we get to see more about why why he's like hating on himself quite so much yeah well, i mean well, well let's kick that off i mean that was a, one of the the things uh, i've got as one of the key moments mark's uh mark's faith or lack thereof depending on which way you look at it um and this was a, a big part i think of this uh it, it it was teased out through the scenes with dr sturman which basically the issue kind of goes between the past and the present um so the mm. the therapy possessions were in the past uh and as we mentioned dr sturman's trying to get him to kind of um break down those walls and and i like that almost he's, he's got this stack of cards as well um which again yeah, is, the, is the, kind of symbolic like, breaks down by the end which is great so really really cool there um i also used to build those pyramids of oh, cards yeah me too when I was a kid at my yeah. grandma's yeah, <laughs> had, had to be absolutely still, no winds, anything like that. <laughs> but um, but one of the big things that comes out uh, and that was mentioned in the synopsis as well was um, about faith and how how Mark perceived initially his father as weak because he was like a pacifist and he um, he followed this indifferent God, as Mark put it. Put it. Well, it's, it's I mean. We have to be careful with how we talk about this because okay. this is genuinely like now we're talking about religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, for sure, for sure. A, a current religion that some of us still. Um, so I think the thing is that like um, he's talking from the point of view of somebody raised Jewish, and and that's why he says to Doctor Sermon, "Are you Jewish? Like, are you going to understand what I'm saying about this?" And I think this is where this is very much like where it does come into what we're talking. It's not so much that. Um, I mean, he says that's how he saw his dad, a weak man serving an indifferent God. Later on, he calls him a jealous God. Yes. Um, so, like, there's this kind of, like, contradiction because, obviously, so many awful things have happened to Jewish people through the centuries and most of our festivals around we were oppressed and we got free and we were oppressed and we got free. So, like, 
from a childish point of view, there is a very sort of like, how do you still believe in this God mm -hmm. who is going to let you go through the Holocaust and um, have Tay-Sachs disease, which is like an inbred disease, okay. you know? Um, and he says that he, yeah, he thought that his dad was weak because his dad was a man of peace, not so much that he was a pacifist. Oh, okay. But that he was, yeah, I think I think they're slightly different. Like he's okay. kind and he's gentle, whereas Mark has definitely got this anger and violence in him. Yeah, well, he he admits that he's addicted to to violence. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and like and, and we know and like and and so he's that's what switches him off the religion. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my arguments about whether you you know you need to worry too much about Jewish actors and stuff is that like he's clearly not like he's clearly fallen from the faith. Mm -hmm. just because he was raised in it like so you're not going to see him saying prayers and doing like jewish festivals so it doesn't matter so much if he doesn't have all the right moves and the right hebrew and the right yiddish yeah, right. like because yeah. he's probably not going to be using it but so the, the very interesting point to me is like right in the middle of that page when he says my father taught me it was our perseverance that was our greatest quality as a people because if there's anything mark displays it's perseverance mm, that's true right? yeah Right. And it's like he so he isn't acknowledging this, but he does have this. He has this thing that his dad says is pivotal. Yes. Um, but, but he he lost his faith. And like um, and so when he was given Conchu's offer, of course, you know, like as Dr. Sturman said, no one could blame you for wanting to live. But it's always been interesting to me that like people have talked before about his Judaism and about, um, you know, an Egyptian God. Yes. But it's. There is a very, very like key part of Judaism with the exodus from Egypt. So there's kind of like, like one of my notes was the chains on the cover not only show that soldiers chain and Mark being weighed down, but it was also like the Jews were slaves in Egypt. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So like there's there's like levels upon levels here, and like um, and uh, you know, but then. Sh when he said, like, but then he says he regrets that choice to follow Konshu, and that that's where you get that's where you get no, but like that's where you get the desolate thing is because he thinks nothing's done, he's not done anything right since. That's right, yeah. He has this, yeah. um, he hasn't, yeah, exactly. It, it's it's how he perceives himself as well, and yeah, um, it, it there's definitely it definitely seems to to be a a uh, a schema of being unworthy. You know, yeah, of, and um... he feels he's not helped anyone, which is like yep. clearly untrue. But he's still doing the midnight mission because he doesn't know what else to do. Yeah, exactly. That's all that he has left. I mean, like he says as well, like you've stripped that all away. What what is left? So, and yeah, immediately he started forming a new team around him. Yes. Yeah. So like. I, I think it's it's um I think they're definitely showing that his perceptions of himself are not accurate. Yeah, true. True. Like in the same way as the perseverance like it is shown and also the choice he makes with soldier is is, is what any rabbi would tell you to do if faced with a hide guy uh, in chains who might die is that you you protect life over everything. Now I'm not saying that Mark always does that cuz you know he's he is a bit violent. Um but I think there's it, it, that's what I mean about it. It's, it's definitely been thought about. Oh, like, no, you're for sort sure. of showing things that aren't. Um... So I think like he feels that he has no faith, but he has something because he still believes that that God ex He still believes the Jewish God exists, and he's and and he believes in Konshu, and he so like there's he has faith. It's just he doesn't recognize it as the faith his father had which was this kind of unquestioning faith. exactly I, I think that to me that was almost like a re i mean it is a realization from mark that previously uh as mentioned he said he he saw his his dad as weak but then he's, he's kind of realized the strength mm. that his dad has for uh, with his faith for you know yeah that he's realized it was this quiet sort of quality. And that that is something, actually, that there is a strength to that. So he, he's kind of learning in, in that sense. Um, and then you see when he talks about his um, his family and network, you know, I've buried my father, I've killed my brother. There, there's definite um, kind of, is it remorse or, or you know, just sadness that uh, just he, he's... Absolute sadness. I mean, like, to be fair, 
I mean, killing his brother, he didn't have a huge number of options. No, no. And but but having this realization about his father, because he he was right. always at odds with his father before. It's like I never, I don't have the chance to make up. Exactly. For it now, kind yeah. Of. So there's a lot of there's that going on for him as well. So. I mean, poor guy. And then I like this, as you mentioned, that Dr. Sturman says, no one could blame you for wanting to live, Mark, as well. Because to me, that that adds also yet another complexity to, you know, what she's digging up from Mark yeah. and, and what is coming up. Um, because th- there is that too. Uh, so he was saying that, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fool. I'm, I'm terrible because I ran away and I just... You know, I just chose this Konshu god because he promised me violence. And but she's going, no, no, but like, you, you know, you wanted to live as well. I mean, that, that's yeah. a that's a very um, natural human thing. reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. I mean, my gosh, uh, I I thought these this session, this therapy session was just brilliantly written. Yeah, uh, and then him to end up with saying that he's the man who makes the wrong choice every time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the poor guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. If that's how you feel yourself, like, how do you make a choice? Do you know what I mean? If that's when you start second guessing yourself and stuff. But when he when he then gets to the crux of it in this issue, he doesn't second guess it. No, yes, he doesn't, so, which is the beauty of it. Like this. I said, yeah. I think there's a lot of neat little reflections that Mark's perception of himself yeah. is not how other people would view him. Like, it's certainly not going to be what Soldier or his mother views him as after this evening. Yeah, I mean, and there have been heroes before as well that, show some sort of you know self-hatred and stuff but this this is like another level for me because you, you do yeah say another it. of the lines i really liked um was like my father's god took us out of egypt my new mm. my new kept us there which kind of implies that there is a level of like he can't get away from conshu not slavery oh, because right. that's a emotive term but like that that kind of like you know i can't escape I can't escape him. Locked into a contract kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so absolutely, I, I think this was one of the the shining moments of of this issue. And, and as mentioned, I mean, this stuff, I mean, you could argue to an extent has been brought up before in a lot of Mark, uh, in a lot of Moonlight yeah. issues. But this is just done, I think, in, in a totally different way. Um, it, it adds a lot more to it. Um, yeah, I and, think it's yeah. also like this, this really hammers home the sort of egypt dichotomy and just and also that like how mark sees it versus how other people see it because often we don't get both views um and if anybody wondered the reason that god is written with the dash when Mm -hmm. he's quoting bible is is because that's how we write it okay because i I did wonder that so yeah yeah we write write gods if we're talking about many different pantheons Mm. like but if we're writing about our god we write with a okay. with a hyphen. It's the same like we don't say his full name even when we're reading it out in Hebrew. We use like alternates. And like if you see people doing prayers on TV shows, they'll often do a fake prayer, um, especially if they're not Jewish and they're not doing whatever it is the prayers for. Um, so we have all these words that we exchange with the name of God. So to reflect okay. that when we're writing it in English, we write the dash. So right. Okay. So yeah, that's and that's why that's the only section is because that's where he's quoting Bible. <laughs> he's quoting Ten Commandments. So yeah, well, that's great. I mean, that's great that that's kind of you know adhered to yeah, like in Jed's writing. Yeah, I, I thought that was really nice little touch. Yeah. Um, further on with this discussion with Doctor Sturman as well, I guess the other, uh, and we've touched upon it as well. One of the other key points was. I guess it mentions Mark's network, and, and, and you've said as well, Rebecca, how he said himself he always makes the wrong choices. Um, everyone kind of oh, has their life ruined. Listed them. Yeah, but we do get us. Yeah, this was, I thought, um, a, pr- a pretty much a standout because, you know, we've been wanting, we've been wondering about what's happened. We've heard heard a little bit of, of Marlene and, and Dietrich mm. uh, in the last issue. So this is kind of like a reference to, to that. And, and I might as well just say it now. It's a reference to the Max Bemis run. That's where Dietrich um, kind of came about during that run. Um, but yeah, this was uh, interesting. He makes mention, I'm just trying to find it now, of um, of like some of his, like some of the people are lost and others are, uh, what was yeah, it? he says the lucky ones just the... hate me for being part yes. of my life. The others are in the ground. Others in the ground. So what does do, 
Are we? I don't. To believe I just, that, yeah. I I have no idea, but I can imagine we'll find out. Yeah, because in previous runs, at least it was uh, was it Ricky that had passed away. Yeah. Um, so there was that at least. Um, Crawley, tenuously maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe Crawley, but we'll mm. see. I mean, like, it's like yeah. it's it's another like gamblers you take your choices yeah. i think we don't want it to be french georgina more <laughs> yeah true true uh, um but it'd be interesting if one of her kids had oh yeah yeah no for sure because then that that would automatically break gina from him yes oh yeah so... yeah um i mean we haven't seen uh, and actually that mentions uh there was a little bit of mention of drd at the beginning about yeah. um about but it's he, kind of uh, in under control. Under control, and um, they've only come out for a few minutes. So, in this mm. series, it seems that Mister Knight or Mark. Well, he always he tells Reese, you know, haven't I told you to call me Mister Knight? So he's. I he, think he's just trying to keep her from being a friend. Mm, okay, I Keeping think that's a less a kind of um, identity thing and more like he's kind of a little bit mad that Tigra told her oh, what his okay. name is. You know, like <laughs> okay. and it's like because I I think. Like, given the experiences he had and how he's thinking now, it's like the you know he's started to see Reese as someone he can trust and someone he can tell immediately to be safe when there's a when there's trouble. Like, um, but he he's not quite as comfortable with her being a friend. Yeah. Um, and can we just dwell on that splash page when he does tell her Reese to so, go? Oh my god, <laughs> it's really cool. Because um, again, Yacht is even oh. better this time. Even better. That that splash page is just gorgeous. Oh my gosh, there were a few really great splash pages here. There's no that would be to have on the wall. Yes, that would. I mean, the colours. I love again, Rochelle Rosenberg. The colours, the clay, the cape, the yeah. placement with the moon, the massive sky uh, high rises Hi- behind. Yeah, and they just kind of like disappear towards the bottom. Like you know, yeah. Um, just a, in a cloud of colours. That's really Our cool. Streets, yeah, yeah. So um, just wanted to give a shout out there. Generally, I mean, I think that the art has just really improved every issue. I think it just yeah. seems yeah. to be getting better and better. Um, uh, yeah. There was a mention of uh, I saw in your notes there as well, Rebecca about Tigra. Um, so that was good. Yeah, nice mention of her and the making sure Reese is safe. But yeah, that that was my point. Is that he doesn't like tell he doesn't tell her he's not doing anything dangerous. He says go away. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like go go get yourself safe. Get Tigra to help you. And and again, this is uh, I mean, it may seem very uh, obvious as well, but I guess this could be a reaction to him knowing how he's kind of wrecked, how it's cost him everything, basically, this allegiance mm-hmm. to Conchu and how his friends. I mean, we've seen it in the Houston run as well. Everyone who gets to know Mark, you know, their life turns upside down. So he's just really, as you're saying, keeping a distance with the likes of Reese. Yeah. And um, it's good to see. I mean, Tigra at least has a, a closer relationship with him, which is good. Yeah, yeah, which is and, um, nice. Yeah, hopefully we see her a bit later on as well. Um, now, Rebecca, the other one I had was, it, it's a small scene. It was the... Um, the mum scene, the, the muffins, as she was saying. Yeah, I love her. I love her. I, like, it was so, like, we already know that Soldier lives with his mum. Mm. That's why he came to get Mark in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we have no idea what discussion they have, which I also love. I love that as well. Just, yeah, yeah. You, you're just left to your own kind of, what are they talking like, about? He, like, like maybe he's finding out how soldier like like because if you find this is your big bad would you go like it just seems such a off the wall thing to do and yet it makes so much sense yeah i um i interpreted it though um as well um, you know correct me if, if it might be wrong that that after meeting his mum i think he figures out that it's not a soldier um i think that's definite um that's a definite hint that I got from that is like let's go find out what his mom like also see if she can give us any clues so she's also met Mr. Knight yeah but I mean, she's also met Moon Knight when he saved the zombies yeah yeah true um 
Love the idea of him having a cup of coffee in front of him when he's fully masked up. <laughs> like, the white suit lady. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, keep the coffee away. But And there's also, I mean, you just say the, the, the body language as well um, <laughs> about, like, she's listening intently he's to really him. He's explaining something. He's explaining something. Like, yeah. she, she's got, like, almost, in that third panel, almost like a... Um, Maybe maybe frightened for his son or something or or uh, you know just, we just it certainly looks a little bit worried but worried, like yeah. but beforehand she's almost smiling mm. so you know he's definitely explaining something and he seems quite relaxed like you know he does he does a well. chair you know yeah but then also I wonder if it plays into the you know he's just found out that see what I the way the, the way I interpreted it was he's just seen the picture that a uh, soldier was Hydra mm-hmm. so that he like he was going there to find out a bit more about soldier so he could make this judgment of who lives and who dies. Yeah. And that he didn't quite get to finish it. Cause then he gets the alarm at the midnight mission. Um, because like, you know, obviously Hydra in the comics is much more Nazi aligned than they are in the MCU. So, uh, again, that's also going to trigger a Jewish reaction, even if he's only been brought up, vaguely jewish you know like uh which he has he's been brought up very orthodox um so i think like he was just trying to get a bit more information generally it's being smart he's not like rushing in and you know which again we is not something we've necessarily always seen him do is sit back and think oh, about no, it a little no, bit yeah no hardly i mean especially in the moon knight suit you know yeah. um i think also just looking at it again and i'm reading the the captions that go with these pictures i'm thinking maybe also he might be taking a leaf out of his father's point of view i think that's it he's trying to do the mental kind thing of like uh yeah. Trying, yeah that's his tactic let, let me see if this works um i don't need to bash heads and and stuff and and so yeah we get this description of uh he would have died before he broke faith with god before recognizing another uh, yeah, all my life uh, I thought my dad was weak because uh, he was uh, because he was kind and gentle and would never raise a hand in violence. So we see Mark just or Moon Knight just having a civil yeah. conversation. Um, and, and it's also where he admits his addiction to violence. Yeah, and again, so. and the cracked phone, <laughs> which is kind of like a little yeah. sign which is, of violence. I love that because, <laughs> like, yeah, like how would his phone not be cracked? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a really I'd love to. Um, I've thrown it out there. Hopefully, hopefully we do get Jed on again, Jed McKay, for yeah. a bit later on. I'd love to ask him about this scene because it was just it really, yeah, it really yeah. threw me. Um, but I can see you can read into a lot of it, and as you say, it was such a nice pause, and because you had the dialogue over it, you didn't notice you weren't really getting any information until you came back and reread it and went, oh, no idea what they were talking about. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of you know that that final whisper. In uh, is it Lost in Translation? Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like you're not really meant to know what it is, but you yeah, just, and you don't need to know. You don't need to like, know. Just experience it, and yeah, and uh, I thought it was really, really good. Very different. Um, yeah. So, moving on, as you said, there's a, a perimeter breach at the Midnight Mission, and that's where Moon Knight eventually finds Soldier. Uh, in the deep basement of of the Midnight Mission, it seems. I, I'm assuming because there's. Oh no! Or is that that his office? I'm not sure. That's his. That's his office, I think, because he's got the statue. That's his office, because there's the chair and the statue. I mean, maybe where he sleeps as well, since you know we know he sleeps oh, yeah, in the office. <laughs> that's a weird, though. That's right. <laughs> a bit odd. Sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, that's that to me is the weirdest thing about Mark at the moment. <laughs> it is a bit strange, um, but I, I love he's it. Clearly not claustrophobic. Let's put it that way. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. You won't get storm in there, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so we see Soldier. I mean, this was a he was a um, uh, what do you call it the the red herring before. Um, yeah. So yep. as, as mentioned, he was uh, the one in the uh, yeah in the uh, in the previews. In the previews, uh, a, a, a striker genius there to put that in the previews. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was really cool. Uh, but Cherry brings Moon Knight to um, to what apparently is Soldier's other place, which all the surveillance gear. Um, set him up with that photo, which is a real photo, by the way, apparently. So Soldier is has been part of Hydra. Um, yeah, so yeah. he has a history. But, yeah, this, this final scene I think was really, um, really cool. I mean, we didn't have action 
really that much at all. In no, the issue but until... if you look at how the art plays out here, it's done mm. incredibly well. Like, first of all, so you've got the walkie-talkie with, um, I think we can say Terry now, talking about, like, how he's got, he's reinforced the chains. Yes, hardened, um, hardened You don't have time to do this. We've put epoxy in the keyhole. There's no way you can do that. Blah, blah, blah. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. The guy is also expired your piece of trash. And Mark's like, nah, we're going to do this. <laughs> And even Soldier says, "I'm not worth it." Oh boy, have we had that? Have we had that as a theme yeah. in this? Issue? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not worth it. Save yourself. Exactly. Um, exactly. And then Mark, bless him, says that he's just been to his mom. Um, and then he says, "I decide who deserves to live and die around her." I love that. Which is, is, I think, a really interesting comment. Well, I, I, I think it's just just kick ass. I mean, he's... it's so kick ass. I mean, like if that was going to be his new phrase, it's very moon. It's very midnighter. Yeah. But I will accept. Oh, it. okay. Yeah, I love midnighter. Yeah. Uh, and and also like that he's got so so. This is that this is the perseverance we were talking about earlier. Is that like everything about this chain has been manufactured so you cannot break it before the bomb goes off. But he finds a way to do it, which is a microplasma torch toy. Of from course, his of state. course. So what's well... happened to his money? <laughs> Interesting. No, but I mean, what's happened to the money? Oh, from my Something... from my wealthier days, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I mean, he still has money. He set up the midnight mission. There's still rent and stuff like that. But he definitely says wealthier ways. And then he tells Soldier what to do, gives him the order, and then we get to the next page, which is the was it nine vertical nine horizontal panels oh yeah yeah tick tock tick tock there's your action sequence oh it is it's just done it's just done like that it's done to sort of build up the sort of countdown oh i i think i think as you said earlier on with the description of the the chain and the epoxy that really yeah. started that kind of um against time element uh, mm-hmm. and that there's a bomb and so i think from that very get-go it was so suspense like there was there's so much tension Can we say, though reese has not gone very far she appears to be just standing outside. Oh, yeah, I she hope that's not further. I like, hope that's a different building. But that like, might be the other side. Yeah, there could be maybe yeah. the other side Let's of the city. the other side. Because, like, Reese, yeah. start yeah. to obey instructions, please. Uh, Reese, I know. And you, then you... right in the last panel, you see the uh, chain give. Yes, uh, but not shortly, but not, not long before the yeah. midnight mission explodes. It in just, another gorgeous page. It's another great I mean, page. Yeah. Oh, and look at that lettering as well. Yes. I don't yeah. know whether the artist did that or the letterer, because sometimes I know the artist they, does it. Yeah. Big. Yeah. But whoever did it, that is amazing. Oh, and so at this stage, I mean, we know, of course, that Moon Knight will survive. But for me, the the tense moment was, has Soldier survived Soldier. this thing? Yeah. You know, so um, it's I, I found this, this different kind of sort of action uh, really, really effective. Yeah, it actually managed to ramp up that tension of like, I don't know if he will or not, because once we know he's ex Hydra, you kind of think, well, the comics would kill someone like that off. Exactly. But, uh, but also, like, you've just seen him talking to his mum, and it's like, I don't want him to have to yeah. go back to his <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, yeah, very cool. The Moonlight uh, was sneaky enough to go through the. Uh, oh, the, the man. Come up through the port. Whatever they call it. manhole, yeah, the manhole, yeah. Um, so yeah, again, like just with the fight. I like the... that the first word he says though is God. Can oh, I just yeah. say, no, he does. like again, it just seems very on the nose and yet appropriate. Like which God? What God? Like oh, God. you know, oh, it's God, just like this yeah. whole thing is like you know, it it just it made me chuckle. Yeah, and, and we also, I mean, we finally get. I guess justification for Mark or Moon Knight to have a tattered costume. I mean, we've seen it so many yeah. times on the cover, so now it kind of makes sense. He, he's you know half been blown up, um, so uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to sorry, Rebecca, just go back on that that thing about the action and the tension scene because yeah, I, I don't think like a a natu- you know a, a generic fighty punchy punchy scene would have just it wouldn't have worked you know nothing it would have just to me it would have seemed pasted in say if like you know yeah. moon knight and soldier fought because there was a misunderstanding um this is just totally different uh so yeah i really enjoyed it uh and then we finally get to our you know one of the last uh bits uh rebecca i for a second there, I thought, "Oh my God, is that is that arcade?" <laughs> um, uh, we see what it actually is. Terry, um, not yeah. 
arcade, uh, but he puts on the mask and he dubs himself, well, he reveals himself as Zodiac. So, big reveal at the end. We've all been waiting for it. Uh, Although, can we just have, like, No You Jerk is definitely funny. Sorry? Like, him calling him calling oh. No You Jerk is just one of the funniest lines. <laughs> I was like, no, you jerk. It yeah. just kept bringing me back to the Moon Knight, no, you nerd. Oh. Um, but, like, I don't know why. It just, it just, I don't think anyone says jerk, so it makes me laugh. Yeah, I, I don't know too much about Zodiac, but he seems like to be a little bit um, off the cuff and just informal, yeah. so that I mean, kind of like, I, language. Yeah, Yeah. Russell gave us the heads up on Discord that he's he's only been in, like, five issues before, if we mm. discount the issues he's appeared in as Terry. Um, so I read Dark Rain Zodiac last night. Oh, yeah, I've read just the issue one. It's which, accounts, a... which accounts for three of those five issues. Yes. So... What, what, what did you think of it? Um, the um, It's very it's dark. Fine. And... It's fine. It's, I mean, Dark Rain is Dark Rain. You have to, like, keep remembering that Dark Rain is kind of, yeah, okay. Um, and um, I I liked him. I think he's interesting. I do think he's a little bit Joker. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, which isn't necessarily a criticism, because I liked him more than I liked Joker. Um, and there is so- something interesting about sort of an anarchist, like, um, who has no qualms about killing people for whatever purpose. I, I-, I want to know more about what he has against Moon Knight, because I, like, he seems, I mean, he has big things against other people. Like, I think he's, you know, I just I'd just be interested to see what his why he wants to break Moon Knight so much, unless it's just for fun. In which case, then, it's just for fun. That's fine. But, um, yeah, he he did mention in, like, issue one, um, he he doesn't respect, I guess, the faith that Mark has for something. Yeah, yeah so... I mean, like, because he is an anarchist, and so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I, I like... Yeah, I think he's, a, he's an interesting villain, and it was always going to be somebody that obscure. Have you got yeah. the final page open, by the way? I do. I've just seen the funniest thing in the world. So look in the flames. Okay. Very right-hand side, about the middle. It looks like Batman. Just saying. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, does, I, right? I can see it. Yep. Uh, and now I can't hilarious. unsee it. <laughs> now you will never be able to unsee it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> also, like, Zodiac's, the, the, um, the tag name is a bit, like, hilarious. Like, oh, we'll do it in this one. Like, I, I, I sometimes like when they do it, and I sometimes think, oh, God. Like, does that mean he changed his voice and said, call me Zodiac? <laughs> I mean, that, that's consistent, though, with the, the logo, right, for Dark Rain? So that that's apparently mm-hmm. his, yeah, his, but yeah, that's true. It's um, a very to do. It just always makes me laugh, because you're like, why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I mean, like, look, from this appearance and Dark Rain, and I haven't read the other two appearances, but, like, we don't really know that much about him, and he's. I think what's nice is, like, he's Jed's to play with now. So, like, you know, we you can get a sense from him from reading the Dark Rain stuff and probably the other stuff. But like, um, we'll, we need, you know, find out if he's still got the Scorpio key or those kind of cool things. Mm-hmm. Like, like what his powers are, because as far as I could tell from Dark Rain. Uh, one of them is that he can't feel pain now, but that's oh. if it's stuck with dark rain, which okay. is somebody who can't feel pain is an interesting villain for Mark, who likes to inflict pain. Um, yeah, I just I like I feel like I don't want to know too much. Like I don't want to read too much into knowing what's already been established from him because so little has, you know, as far as I'm oh, concerned. Jack- okay. Just now play with him, do what he wants. Yeah, it's it's almost like a clean palette for. Um... And it'll be interesting to see if he becomes a big villain, like say Bushman and uh, Black Spectre and stuff, or if he's just getting us launched into this. Uh, it'd be very interesting. Um, I I yeah had a look at Dark Rain as well, and I'd I'd recommend uh, Lenny listeners to to read it. I think it's available on Marvel Unlimited. Is that right, Rebecca? I read it off Marvel Unlimited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. And um. Yes. Yeah, that's also available on Comixology. It's only a dollar ninety nine for each of the issues, um, but yeah, go check it out. It's very dark. It's very violent. <laughs> um, yeah, he doesn't yeah. pull any punches. If you like Moon Knight, though, you'll probably be all right with that. I mean, like, if you're a fan of Moon Knight, you will have seen that level of violence before. Um, although it's a little bit more mass murdery. And so, it just begs the question, 
as well. Rebecca, um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, we saw Terry. Well, the Dark Knight at... things were very influenced by DC villains, though. Oh, were they? Okay. Yeah, I thought it was a lot of sort of Joker Harley kind of relationship. A oh. little bit of I chucked in there, you know, like yeah. Um, but that that's not saying that. Like again, like I said, this is almost like a fresh start for him. You pick someone that that obscure, you can really go to town. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, and it's I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We'll have to just see uh, what Jed has in store with with Zodiac. Um, but yeah, uh, I just made me wonder as well, uh, Rebecca, because he's Terry, right? Um, and if you if you read the Dark Rain comics, you can see it. It's a red headed kind of guy, yeah, yeah. so very consistent. With full scars. So that's quite interesting. I wonder if he like made ah. over the makeup for the scars or whatever. So, but is he is he a vampire though as well? Because weren't the three of them in the vamp uh, vampires in the van? So Reese was one. So has he been be turned as well? Crazy. So I don't know. That would be crazy though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that having having an absolute crazy. anarchist like yeah. as a vampire. So, um, we'll have to. Be I guess. Blake. So, oh yeah, meet Blake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be I awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'd love that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's the big, that's the final big moment, I guess, of this issue. Uh, any other um, notes, Rebecca, that you may have that we may have missed or accidentally? Uh, I'm past? just having a quick look. Uh, no, I think that's. Oh, I ref- I mentioned that the the face slicing off joke. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, uh, which is a reference back to Moon Knight number two from two thousand six. And it's where he says, I hope you're not real attached to your face, pal. <laughs> um, which, you know, look, the number of times it comes off in chat, I thought we should give a nice nod to it as a as a reference to another run. Absolutely, yeah. Um, another time that Mark couldn't quite uh, hold in his violent tendencies. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just loving this run uh, at the moment. Uh, I think, I mean, we, we've got Zodiac, so I'm assuming uh, issue six will be... A big showdown of some description. Um, yeah, um, I'll be interested to see if Hunter's Moon mm, oh, comes yeah. back. Uh, like, what that kind of play is. Let's have a look. Yeah, so Terry Terry is the first panel of the first issue. Okay. So Terry is the one telling Mark that people have gone missing. So I'm not ah. sure if he's found or if he's just telling people that people are getting found. I think he's just telling people. Okay. Okay. He's oh. the first. So I just had a look, sorry. That's all the typing you could hear in the background. Oh, no, know. no. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. The, well, he's never had the red eyes like Reese, so. No. That, or um... the pointy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she had, she had pointy ears. I didn't, I didn't notice. But she had teeth. Oh, teeth. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> Um. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, with that, I mean, we do have some feedback, Um. which we'll have to. Fair bit of feedback. We'll go through. Uh, let's round this off, Rebecca. Connish's rating system. What would you give this? Horoscope, issue five of Moon Knight by Jed McKay. Well, I put down a full moon, mm-hmm. nine out of ten, but I think maybe 9.5. Yeah, I'm veering on. I, I was thinking, thinking the same as well. I was thinking, should I bump yeah. it up? Yeah, I'm almost thinking of bumping up to ten, but I kind of oh. want to see the resolution now. Well, I gave the first issue a ten. I'm feeling a bit guilty that I haven't given another one a ten. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think I'll just stick with nine point five for this, and um, we'll see. It, it's certainly it's... one of the strongest. I mean, there's only five issues yeah. of this series, but it's yeah. <laughs> one of the strongest ones. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. A nine point five, a full moon, a full uh, just a full moon in a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, it was very strong. Um, I just. I think it just balanced everything perfectly and it had the big reveal. We were all kind of waiting for it uh, and it didn't disappoint. Uh, it had that bait and switch with uh, with Soldier at the beginning. Um, so, yeah, just Jed just having fun with with the readers and uh, and yeah. the reveals. But I think somebody had, I think somebody on the Discord already said that like, they hoped that they, the preview wasn't true because Soldier seemed very obvious. So I, I think that's like when I was chatting to them, it was kind of like, yeah, if they've let it go out in a preview, the chances are that it, it won't. There is a bait and switch, but we'll see. Like yeah. either way, I trust Jed to either make Soldier more interesting or to bait and switch us. So uh, I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Oh yeah, no, fantastic. So, uh, so loonies, there you go. Uh, high high ratings from both the high priests of Conchu. Uh, we might just take a quick short break, and when we come back, uh, Rebecca and I will go through your. Uh, feedback and your thoughts on this issue so stay tuned a 
Hello Looney listeners, this is Ray here. Just uh, wanting to say, look, if you like Moon Knight, I urge you to give The Fringe Knight a go. This is a self-published indie release by creator and writer Daniel Doing, um, and it's a, it's a ripper of a read. Uh, the Fringe Knight is an adventure comic series set in Erie, Pennsylvania, and the series stars the title character who protects his city from every threat imaginable. From radioactive wolfmen to mad scientists putting poodles in giant robots, The Fringe Knight is there to protect. Definitely worth checking out. I highly recommend it. Uh, available, uh, just check out the show notes uh, in this episode, but uh, The Fringe Knight has a Facebook page as well as a Patreon page, and you can also find all the comics on IndiePlanet.com. So check out Fringe Night by Daniel Doing. All right, let's get on to the show. Hey everyone, this is Phil. And Lola. Of the Capes and Lunatics podcast. You're listening to Into the Night. The. The. Moon Night podcast. Yes, welcome back. Looney listeners, you are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is a big 250th episode, and it has been revealed the big bad dude in Jed McKay and Alessandro Capuccia's and Rochelle Rosenberg's Moon Knight series. Uh, so on the other side of the break there, you heard what Rebecca and I thought about this issue. Uh, we've got a fair bit of feedback here, Rebecca. I'm hoping maybe we um, just alternate, same same yep, deal. Yep, yep. Um, with the, yeah, some of the feedback received from the loonies. Do you want me to head start, um, go for Yeah, or... uh, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, just saying. Okay. Starting with the Facebook page, mm-hmm. and this is Chad. Um, wow, the turntables keep turning. The bait and switch with Soldier Zodiac was an interesting development. That aside, finally getting Mark's motivations, lamentations nailed down, really clarified how desperate he is for a purpose right now. I could have sworn Mark fought Zodiac before, cast him down from a helicopter. Um, I love the city art again. It's just one beautiful aurora after another. And I'm looking forward to see how this style matures into Devil's Rain. Mm. Oh, yeah. I forgot we have the Devil Rain as well. Uh, It's going to be a long week for Mark. Uh, Definitely rating this one on the high end, maybe an 8.5. Good depictions of the characters, a bit of story building, and it sure has us on the edge of our seats. Oh, cool. Thank you so much, Chad. Yeah, it's... um... I mean, yeah, similar similar thoughts to Rebecca and our own as well. D- Devil's Reign will be cool, Rebecca. I think. Um, yeah, I've got to remember. I've, I've got to make sure I order it. <laughs> so, like, thanks, Chad. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you... it takes a while for my comic shop to put the the issues online. Oh, okay. So um, I have to wait like well after the announcement to remember uh... to order them. So it's not just. Uh, uh, a silly thing it's literally a, oh no i really do <laughs> <laughs> um and whether or not mark has fought zodiac before um yeah i don't i don't know about this iteration of zodiac but he definitely fought zodiac uh, in the defenders back in the 70s uh, but that was a that was the lmd yeah. of nick fury or the brother of nick fury so that was something totally different um, marvel they're all mad. <laughs> yeah they're all crazy uh <clears throat> another comment here from Zach Sarah um, Sarandria <clears throat> pardon me uh, and Zach writes such an amazing issue this series keeps surpassing my expectations the twist at the end was fantastic Jed McKay just gets Mooney and writes him so damn good and Capuccio is killing it on the art and couldn't agree more um, I think his panels and his artworks yeah. will go quickly once they're on up for sale uh, do you oh, yeah. I haven't I don't know. I can't remember, Rebecca. You, do you buy art? Like, I I generally don't because it's not my price range. But it's I quite do expensive, have isn't it? Yeah. Original pages now. So okay. Uh, but they were both on heavy discount. So it's expensive. <laughs> I have a Captain America one and oh, nice. a Champions one that I just picked up this weekend. A Champions one, nice. It had baby. It had baby Cyclops and baby <laughs> and baby Nova in. So oh. and uh, there's Cho and so you know it's hard to resist and it was a ridiculous price that if I'd walked past it I would have so you would have lamented yeah yeah, yeah. I, it would have been ridiculous yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So. 
Uh, okay, so next one, Brandon Bartley Chambers. Probably my favourite issue of the run so far. I totally fell for the red herring. Loved the switch up. <laughs> Moon Knight's discussions with the therapist was terrific. Really enhanced the emotional stakes. Uh, and in brackets, I'm an aspiring author. It was an excellent example of the character's outward journey directly reflecting their inward struggle. I hope to do this well one day with my characters. Nice. I love that the soldier told Moon Knight to leave him to die. And Moony basically said, hey, screw you. I do what I want now. Yank on this chain so I can save your life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hope we see more lots more of Soldier. I do too. Me too. Uh, maybe Moon Knight can teach him something about redemption. And I think that's a really important point is that now we can have Soldier and his mom as part of our extended <laughs> family. No, I mean, like, you know, because Mark could do with a bit of like yeah. mothering, you a know, few, and a few muffins. Uh, it yeah. should be from his female friends. So, uh, and I think there is something very engaging about the redemptive journey uh, of, say, a former Hydra soldier uh, working alongside a Jewish guy. I think so, that's. I think that's great. I think it's. Oh, yeah, I didn't finish. Sorry, it goes oh. over, over a page. Yep. Sorry. Uh, so back to the feedback. I was glad Tigra was referenced. Hopefully, she's still in New York and can lend our hero a claw in future <laughs> issues. I loved how the cover perfectly tied into the issue. How Mark feels like he's weighed down chained down by guilt and then there were literal chains that needed breaking no idea who zodiac is but i'm excited to find out see that was my initial reaction and then i went on discord and found out that i could read up very quickly but yes i'm i'm right there like excited to find out what happens yeah and and uh, and uh alongside the the things that you mentioned as well rebecca about the chains and the front cover um zodiac has a chain around his neck as well so yeah yeah so it's all all tying in um, but thank you so much there, Brandon. Um, good to hear from you last episode as well. Uh, in our Facebook group, uh, another loony that we've received feedback from before. Love hearing from him, Mario DiGiacomo. Uh, and Mario says, blink, blink. <laughs> okay, that was a swerve. But one that worked on multiple levels. We were led down the garden path as much as Mark. I vaguely remember this guy, but I'm going to have to research him before I look at the pieces. Uh, I will have more to say, but the parts with Dr. Sturman work quite well. As someone who is not entirely free of mental issues, not DRD, not clinical, uh, they resonated quite a bit. And I love the fact that uh, Moon Knight was just sitting in that kitchen enjoying fresh-baked muffins and a nice chat. Uh, And then Mario later says, "Okay, I've tracked down his previous appearances, no major challenge. There are only five, and two are only a handful of pages. And it's rather annoying how well he fits the clues, right down to the righteous anger and the high body count. Well played, Mr. McKay. Uh, I do wonder if he still has the key, of course. I always had a soft spot for that particular MacGuffin. Even wrote up a few paragraphs about it for, oh, Marvel Unlimited app? Oh, cool. Maybe that's a site or something. Okay, cool. Maybe it's the actual app or maybe it's Marvel Unapp, an Mm. actual thing. Barrio will have to expand on that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, muffins, absolutely. What are your favourite muffins, Rebecca? Do you do you like muffins? Uh, I, I they're all muffins are good muffins. They're all good. I make a I make a nice apple muffin. Nice apple and muffin. but obviously cho- double chocolate. Ooh, like, no like chocolate. I mean, sorry, you know, preferably Nutella in the Ooh. middle. <laughs> oh, God. It <laughs> just keeps growing. I like chocolate a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's sorry. Good. Um, look, I'm partial to the old uh, orange and poppy seed. I think they're. They're really nice. I always get them. Really? We do lemon and poppy seed. Oh, that would be even better. Jeez. Interesting, like, cross-cultural thing. Mm. I just wish he would. I, I feel bad that Moon Knight may not have been able to eat any of the fresh baked muffins because of his mum. <laughs> like, I just, I felt bad for him. Yeah, just, <laughs> excuse me, just turn away while I munch Yeah, on just this. turn away. I just want to, <laughs> like, yeah. like it feels like, um, you know, we're all masked up at the moment on trains and stuff. And, like, you get a bit hungry and try and, like, all right Corey hardeman um feedback that reveal took me by surprise and i'm looking forward to how this turns out i assume it's the same zodiac from the dark rain storyline and he was brutal a perfect adversary for moon knight mm. great writing as every issue of the run has been so far love the art i just love everything about this run also use of the plural when referring to dead friends makes me think crawley really did die in the may run and that wasn't all Ooh. in marks Interesting, because we hadn't seen Crawley in in the Bemis run, so he'd yeah. been MIA for yeah. a long a long while. But thank you, Corey. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, again, I always um, love getting Corey's comments as well because I know yeah. he does uh, 
you know, keep a high standard. But for, so to, to see that Corey's love in this series is, yeah, is gold. I love it. Um, and we have a, a comment here from Lena, uh, one of our valued loonies. Uh, Lena says, I thought the therapy parts of this issue were intriguing. The part where Mark opened up about his feelings, about his father's faith and his own guilt was very powerful. I'm not sure if I agree with everything Dr. Sermon was saying about DID. It depends on what she meant by dissociative episodes. Uh, if she meant uncontrollable switching due to being triggered, she's right. That is something that we should uh, work to try to minimise. If she meant any switching at all it should be minimised, I don't agree with that. Our therapist taught us that we should respect each other and work together and not let anyone alter any one alter control and suppress all the others. Mr. Knight's comment about Stephen and Jake not coming out more than a minute at a time made me think that he is thinking of the latter interpretation and trying to be the only one in control. But Dr. Sturman's comment about his history having increased his stress threshold makes me think that she intended the former interpretation. But overall, this was a very interesting issue. Yeah, interesting thoughts as well, as well there. Uh, thank you, Lena. And um, Yeah, definitely. From, uh, some with a bit more... Yeah, experience of it than us. So, but it did, it did. I did go back and kind of read that again, Rebecca. And yeah, it, it did seem that like Mark was saying, or oh, was insinuating that uh, I've got this under control, and I'm not trying to get the, I'm not allowing yeah. the alters to come out. Uh, so uh, yeah, obviously, I absolutely agree. But like, um, I think if it, it just, I'm going to take a step back. I totally agree with what Lena says. And I think all those concerns are valid and it's such a valuable insight for us, but I think it's pretty incredible that we've got to the point of moon Knight writing <laughs> where we can discuss that aspect of it and not whether he's being called a schizo. How cool. Um, is it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, yeah. and you know, I'm sorry for like going back on that and like dredging up old, old wounds there, but like just the, the, the fact that, it's clearly been thought about a bit more. Like we're, we're getting mm-hmm. that. And uh, that's not an excuse to not get it bang on, but uh, it just struck me when you were reading that, like going, can you imagine like two years ago having that discussion about a Moon Knight issue? Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, like it's, it, crazy. it's, um, it's crazy, but good crazy. So, so the next one is from Doug. So uh, let's see uh, their view. Uh, I thought the third parts were interesting too, but I was really interested in seeing who the mystery villain was. I feel like McKay and Capuccio were teasing us by having Terry have red hair, a huge grin in the suit, <laughs> looking very much like Arcade, but then it's Zodiac. I think particularly teasing Ray, which I approve of. Um, <laughs> uh, at first I thought of Nick Fury's brother mm-hmm. and the LMD of Nick Fury's brother before I realised that both of them are dead and this is the new Zodiac. I vaguely remember reading a Spider-Man story about this Zodiac a while back in which Spidey literally knocked him into next year. No joke. I think (laughs) I've read that. Really? Um, You have to read it to believe it. It was a really trippy story worthy of the extreme wackiness of the Defenders and West Coast Avengers Zodiac storylines for years past. I wonder if this one will have a bunch of LMD lackeys too. Here's hoping for more Zodiac weirdness in the issues to come. Cool. Yeah, so Doug's... um... Rings a bell, but I have mm, no idea. <laughs> I've got no idea as well. Yeah, I just can't wait. I mean, yeah, already issue six is looking to be a a rip snorter, as they say. Yeah. Uh, I just can't wait to see how Zodiac. I mean, Moon Knight's a little bit shaken. He's on the ground. He's just, you know, probably concussed or frazzled from the bomb blast. He's got this absolute terror above him. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, maybe he doesn't need those uh, LMD lackeys. Maybe he's just going to. You know, yeah. stab him. <laughs> uh, uh, Kyle Sist, uh, another um, DID system within our community, very cool, uh, says, mm, don't like this take on DID. All parts are valid and allowed to exist, but of course it is a comic book. So uh, more coherent thoughts to follow. That was from Joe, um, part of the system. Uh, and... Um, then from Jaybird, who's um, from the same system, our Jewish friend is going to give us some thoughts on that angle. I'm so excited to, lo- to learn more about that. Uh, yeah. I'm excited to see what they come up with, what they say. Exactly. Um, but no, thank you for that as well. I know um, I know Jaybird is, uh, is starting to be you know, quite active in our Discord as well, so a little shout-out to our Discord server as well um get in there there's a lot of great chat and uh we also have a, a sometimes get random comments from me when i've woken up in the middle of the night 
That's awesome. <laughs> hey, that <laughs> that accent, and then go back to sleep. Uh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> three three words, and then Rebecca disappears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but there is a channel called Understanding DRD, which uh, Lena has helped uh, set up. And so, if you want to learn more about DRD and have discussions with the likes of Lena and Doug and Joe and JB, um, just go check it out there. It's uh, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, and then. Um, oh, I get the long one. Okay, I'm good with this. Uh, <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, so in response to the last episode, yes. the Moon Knight teaser episode, which was excellent, uh, Dolia, is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, that teaser got me very hyped. I hope it lasts multiple seasons like Daredevil and it's not just establishing his character for him to appear in future shows and movies. I think there's a lot they could do with him, if you don't mind. I'll just put down my multi-season plan for the Moon Knight <laughs> show. Read it if you want. Um, I think Bushman should be the first villain. He's vital to Mark Spector's origins, and he's just an overall great villain. Then season two can combine the 40-page special origins of Black Spectre from the 80s run and his arc in the 2006 run. They'll need to change up some of the plot details. That's just him going to jail for years, then getting out. I haven't thought of a good fill-in for this yet, but you get the idea. (laughs) Uh, Now for the third and fourth seasons, this is the big one, they can introduce the Midnight Man along with his son Midnight. Midnight Man isn't my favourite Mooney villain, although he's very iconic, so they should, and this is changing up their origins a bit, they were introduced over a decade apart, but I think this is a good change that benefits the plot, so yeah, introduce both of him and his son in the third season, make Midnight and Midnight Man partners in crime in the first episodes of season three, then a few episodes in, Midnight realises the errors of his ways and joins Moon Knight, so throughout the season... Midnight is trying to redeem Midnight Man, but then in the season finale for season three, Midnight and Moon Knight are fighting the Midnight Man. <laughs> this is like a tongue twister, but I love it. It is, yeah. Uh, but Midnight ends up killing Midnight by accident when they're fighting. So this enrages Midnight, and he gets into a battle with Moon Knight for eliminating his dad. A fight ensues, and it leaves Midnight with terrible injuries, but then... For more plot reasons than I've worked out yet, (laughs) the secret empire finds him and the end credits of the final episode tease uh, tease them having an operation on midnight, implanting prosthetics to turn him into something of a cyborg, setting up midnight for the main villain of season four, similar to how they set up Bullseye and Daredevil season three. Um, This is changing his motivations to hunt Moon Knight down a bit, but it's a similar vibe to the comics and it benefits the plot. However... Midnight Man appears as being confirmed for season one, so they can't follow this exactly, though I never expected them to. I hope the show does something cool. Let me know if you like this little plan. would be much appreciated. Oh. Number one, like the plan. Number yes. two, never realised how much Midnight and Moon Knight sounded like alike until I had to read them out in quick succession. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think I, I really do like the plan, and I'm absolutely certain that is probably not what we're going to see, but yes. it's a great, I mean, um, I, you know, I think we'd all love to see Bushman. Um, I think we'd all love to see black vector. And, and now we think we're going to see midnight man. If that, that rumor is, turns out to be accurate. I mean, an actor had it listed on his thing. That's so we're right. not really, you know, like we think it's true. Um, yeah, I just have, no idea what's going to happen in the TV show, but I I do like that. If anybody else wants to send through what they think will happen, I have to say I do think we're going to have him establishing his character for him to appear in other shows and movies. Uh, but, mid- uh, for, maybe sorry, Midnight Man, you mean? Midnight, so yeah, you meant sorry, Midnight Man. Was that cool? No, yeah, no. Um, oh, no, I think Bushman. Sorry, no, I think Moon Knight is oh, going to be oh, in so okay. movies, not. I don't think we're just going to get four or five series of Moon Knight. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, he's going to be part of the movies as well. Um, yeah. But no, I love your enthusiasm, Dolia. Thank you so much. Please uh, keep on sending in feedback. I love it. And uh, yeah. I love love uh, seeing Rebecca go through that, that tongue, the tongue twister <laughs> and read it at font size two. So thank you very very much, Rebecca. Yeah, thanks, Ray, for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was very small. Glasses but, uh, getting their uh, yeah, workout. It was, uh, it was good. Um, have another uh, short one here from Alex Santana. Uh, from YouTube, and he says, "Can't be more hyped for that Moon Knight show." Dead McKay's run has been dope too. So, thank you, thank you very much, Alex. Hopefully, you're, you've enjoyed our review of the latest issue. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, uh, Instagram, yes, the, the yes, 
Matar. I don't know how you pronounce your username. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I loved it. Ties into one of my favourite stories and a very subtle hint to the mess that was the Bemis run. Uh, I felt very. It felt very apt. It makes me wonder how this version of Mark feels about Jake and Stephen, given his massive self-loathing of himself. That's kind of interesting. I agree. Mm. Um, did not see the twist coming, which I appreciate too. I wonder where the heck the team will go with that villain using that name. If I say anything else, I'll spoil both of these. <laughs> uh, hands down, my favourite issue of this run so far. Push two out of that spot. Oh, yeah. So I guess it's the the whole thing about Zodiac being a serial. Oh yes, yeah. Um. um but yeah, no. Uh, thank you so much. Issue two, yeah, I'll, I'll um, I very much like issue four as well. I can't remember. Yeah. Reread issue two. Um, but always good to get feedback from you, SK Metal. So thank you very much for that. Um, now Rebecca, we've only we've got two more bits of feedback via voice mail. Um, so we're going to read the we're going to play the first one out now. It's uh, from our friend Jack Russell. Give me a keg. Of beer. Moran, take it away, Russell. Hello, loonies and high priests. This is Russell from the Tomes of Evil podcast, and I am sending in this recording with bated breath as I give my thoughts on Moon Knight number five. Oh my god. Okay. So I just want to say right up front, get this out of the way. Not that it's not important, but get this out of the way. The art is amazing. Just keeps getting better. I love how the art combined with the inks are just amazing. Like just Moon Knight standing in doorways with that gleam to him is amazing. The human characters are drawn so, I mean, they're impeccable. It's it's amazing. I, I can't gush enough about it. Um, let's get into it. Okay. In terms of storytelling, I think this is by far the best issue so far in the series. Um... Wow. Um, Mark's therapy session really uh, hit home for anyone that has even vaguely struggled with mental illness. Um, Not even exclusive to DID. Um, I mean, what he's saying can resonate with anyone who has had depression, anxiety, you know, any mental illness and can resonate with someone who um, was kind of born into religion and slowly but surely um, fell out of faith, if you will. Um, It was really good to take that that great moment from the last issue with Tigra and Mark finally has to kind of deal with that with someone who's not, you know, his friend, you know, he, uh, he has to tell his therapist and he has to even more so finally comes to terms with, you know, his friends are gone which we got a little bit of that in the last issue, but we get name drops from Gina, Crawley, Frenchie. It's all there. And uh, as apparently confirmed not to be dead because those were the names that were above ground. Um, But let's talk about the masterful twist. Okay, so... Jed has really learned how to use the previews in a wonderful way because anybody that looked at the previews, um, you know, took it for face value that soldier was the, 
was the bad guy. He was a Hydra agent. So everyone was guessing all these various Hydra agents. It even included me. I was thinking, well, who was a Hydra-related vampire? There's only one. It's Baron Blood. Turns out that was wrong. And I was, like, building up to it. I thought, this is masterful because we've never seen Mark really deal, at least not for a long time, deal with the Jewish side of his character, and a Hydra villain was really going to play into that. Um, but that turned out to not be the case, and we get a beautiful moment where Mark has to save a former Hydra agent in the form of Soldier. And um, the tension was really nice and built up, um, <laughs> we get the great line, a uh, nice little reference, uh, Mark saying, uh, to the mysterious man on the, uh, walkie talkie, I <laughs> hope you don't mind losing your face or hope you're not too attached to your face, something along those lines. But then we get the big reveal is it, it, it's not, I guess a big reveal because it's not a huge character. It's even a character I was unfamiliar with but from the moment that that character is revealed i was immediately on board with a snap of my fingers we have spoilers the zodiac okay so i had to do some digging on this because, you know, when I think of Zodiac in Marvel Comics, I think of that group of villains that was led by Scorpio, um, which was uh, Nick Fury's brother, whatever. He recently resurfaced in Amazing Spider-Man when Slot was still on the book. Anyway, but I had to find this Zodiac, who first appeared during Dark Reign, had his own miniseries. And he's appeared in five issues total. Well, more than that now, because retroactively we know that he was Terry. Um, he's immediately a perfect villain for Moon Knight on two fronts. One, very aesthetically similar to Mr. Knight. He's kind of, you know, it's kind of like what they tried to do with that second Black Spectre in the Ellis run, but ramped up to 11. This guy's actually formidable. He's not a pushover like that second Black Spectre was. And two, he is just chaos. You know, I know there's going to be some comparisons made between the, the other guy and his arch nemesis, but I don't know. This fits perfectly especially when mark was just in therapy about all the issues he were dealing with and this guy basically it's like right up in his face telling him yeah i'm i'm going to burn you to the ground he's already down and this guy is kicking him while he is down so i'm not ashamed to say that i immediately jumped on the band or the uh the uh the bandwagon and bought all of the Zodiac's appearances already. All of them. They're all mine now. And, uh, I can't wait to have Mr. Jed McKay on Tomes of Evil to discuss the Zodiac. Thank you guys. I went a little long, but I was just so excited. If I had to give this one a rating on my own scale, I would say five fake Terry's out of five. Yeah, I loved it that much. Thanks, guys, and be sure to check out Tomes of Evil and Gone the Form of Man, the Itrican podcast. Thanks, guys. Okay, yeah, that was Russell's feedback. Thank you so much, Russell. Um, obviously... Very excited, Rebecca, about the yeah, issue. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's a lot of 
put into it as well. Um, sorry, I'm a bit throaty after that. Uh, yeah, well, um, I, no, no <laughs> I, I, I can totally understand. Um, but yeah, yeah, Russell, uh, we know Russell loves his villains. Uh, so yeah. I kind of thought, yeah, Zodiac would have been a real of interest to you. Um, and, and yeah, so, so. Obs- the, ob- the obscure, the better. Um, yeah. Bless him for reading up on despair after my random <laughs> let me pick a uh, But yeah, he said he's immediately on board with Zodiac. Uh, he noted out that he's aesthetically similar to Mr. Knight in the, the mm. way he's wearing the suits as well, but the dark suits. So it'll be interesting to see if he um, keeps that with the face mask um, he's, and the chaotic and he thinks it fits perfectly. And I'm excited to hear what Russell's chat with Jed about it on Tomes of Evil. Yeah, absolutely as well, yeah, Russell. I mean, like, yeah, that's going to shed a lot of light as well. So yeah. urge listeners to to tune in to Tomes of Evil. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes, of course, and they're part of the collective. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Russell, for for all of that. And yeah, the art is. I mean, everything, as you say, is amazing. So it's. Uh... And I agree that the, the previews were just used brilliantly to yes. skirt it. And it's the second time they've done that in this run. So it's either. Jed and his editor particularly, or Marvel being a bit more clever about not just take, giving you the first four pages, which is what they always used to do. Um, whereas this one actually made it more of an experience. And it also means that I'm more likely to read previews because I don't feel they're spoiling it as such. But, I mean, you can never guarantee. So if you really want to avoid spoilers, still avoid them. So. I'm, I'm starting to kind of... Well, for this one, I actually ended up reading the the spoiler. I thought, like, I couldn't, couldn't resist. Um, yeah, starting to kind of warm to... Yeah, if it doesn't spoil too much. But, yeah, if it's anything like this one, it's great because it, you know, really doesn't give that much away. Um, we have another one here, Rebecca, from our friend Noel, Noel Tate. So uh, take it away, Noel. Rebecca, Ray, how you doing? It's Noel Tate. Um, just throwing in my review, sort of, of uh, Moon Knight issue number six. So I think a lot of Moon Knight fans are sort of naturally contrarians otherwise we wouldn't be into such a weird character contrarians tend to be yeah comic book geeks like we are but we also tend to be sort of punk rock or into uh almost anti-authoritarian leanings uh which is funny that we're fans of uh vigilantes that beat up people at night um so i went to my local comic book shop today and got there and waited around the shelves were empty and waited and uh Looked at some other books. It was like, maybe I'm here too early. They haven't put books out yet. And finally went up to the counter and I said, um, where's the new books? And the person behind the counter said, oh, Diamond hasn't shipped them yet. And the other guy who looked like a manager just looked a little angry behind his mask and said, yeah, this isn't the first time that's happened. And so I bought um, a couple trade paperbacks and put my name on a wait list uh, since I didn't have a pull list at this store and uh, went home and decided I'm not going to give, I know it's not specifically Marvel's fault, but I'm not going to give them money right now by buying this comic digitally. So I went and I sailed uh, the seven seas of the internet and found myself a digital copy to read until I will buy the floppy that will have my name on it at the store. But it makes me want to go on a tirade about diamond distribution and how much of a monopoly they hold over so many comics, but specifically Marvel comics. But I'm not going to go on that tirade now. Just know that I'm pissed off about that. But anyway, I know there's paper shortages and all that shit, but Diamond is so problematic and has been for so long. Anyway, this issue is great. Um, The cover actually, in an abstract way, actually talks about something that happens in the comic. The... uh, I like the back and forth between then and now of his therapy session. And it's really cool to see Mark distill down to the therapist and to us about why he's still Moon Knight and how much guilt he has over that and the relationship with his father and to his Judaism and to his love of violence, which I thought was quite a theme to have in this comic. Brilliant writing. I thought it was fantastic. Um, The art continues to be amazing. I'm, I'm I'm actually more into it with each issue, and I don't know if he's just getting better or he's just figuring out how to do this world a little bit more. But there's just some great images in it, and I really like the twist of Soldier being an ex-Hydra soldier, um, 
but then being used by our main villain actually as like a a way to mess with our heads a little bit and to figure out who the real villain is. And I thought at first, like, is this going to be like a Hydra, famous Hydra agent? I don't know. And it wasn't. And it turns out to be Zodiac. Um, and I'm, I don't know much about Zodiac. I know there was a group called Zodiac. I know there was a guy named Norman Harrison that was like a ghost rider villain who had like a bunch of eyes on his head. Um, that design does not look like that Zodiac. So there's probably a huge chunk of Marvel continuity once again that I don't know what's going on. But um, regardless, it's a great book. Um, it doesn't seem like the end of an arc, which is cool too. It's not a seems almost more like McKay's kind of writing beyond the trade because usually the trade is what five issues or are they six now so maybe he is still writing for the trade if there's one more in this arc overall I think I would probably give it a um eight and a half big beautiful yellow man according to the Connor shoe rating scale um somewhere between a big beautiful yellow man and a full moon so there's my thoughts I uh, hope everybody's doing good and I can't wait to hear what everybody else thinks Yes, thank you, Noel. Thank you for for that. Um, yeah, Noel obviously had a, a a bad experience with. Um... I mean, like he had a similar experience to me. Is that you know we we I also had to buy it digitally. I mean, I had to buy it digitally because um, the UK's comic delivery is so mm. messed up. It's, it's forever to get anything, um, and it's annoying because like why annoying. should I have to pay it twice? You know. Um, uh, I did like how he started off with Rebecca Ray. I, I like jumped out of my seat a little bit. <laughs> he has such a nice well, voice. I was well, just was like, oh, Rebecca. Yeah, so... Like, like, so it was quite funny, like right at the beginning when we'll he sort of opens it. One half, one half of the velvet drapes there, Rebecca. You know, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Dripping with, you know, just goodness, that, that voice. But no, thank you so much. No, eight and a half, like, you know, in between a, a big, beautiful yellow man and, and a full moon. Uh, that's that's up there, similar to Chad's rating as well. Uh, yep. So I take yep. it that's... I think we're all pretty much agreed. Pretty Most cool. of us, apparently. Yes, actually, yeah. I've I've uh, just got something in. So I'd just like to read this out quickly, Rebecca, because I, I want to give, you know, a full range of yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, so, sure. Um, so just finally back on the Facebook group, uh, some Luis, um, Mr. Moon Knight, some of you will know he's been on the show as well. Great fella. Uh, so Luis wrote in, haven't been too impressed with this series at all so far. It's okay. Nothing too special. Unfortunately, the part with the therapist was just drawn out too long. Throwing in the Jewish background, I feel like it is all rushed to throw so much information about his background. Uh, it feels almost forced. If it wasn't the fifth issue, I would have a feeling it would be cancelled soon because they are doing too much with not enough substance to back it up. So, I mean, to be fair, like, you know, um, everyone to each their own. Uh, so thank you so much, Louise. I, well. I have heard other people say that they don't like the writing, which I okay. like. I don't really understand for me yeah but i have heard people say that um yeah it's like they don't buy it as much and so what i thought was interesting is when um dr sturman says mark stop acting like you think moot knight should act like you're a character in a video game mm -hmm. and i wondered if maybe that harkened back to like maybe jed had been doing that on purpose in some of the dialogue in previous issues oh, and that okay. was what some of my friends were having issues with okay um but i didn't have issues with the the dialogue so it's, it's hard for me to but i thought that was an interesting thing that we we hadn't actually touched on is when she said stop acting like me yes. should act yeah. maybe you know i i would be interested to now go and read that full arc mm -hmm. and see if the way mark talks in the last couple of issues with tigra and then with dr sturman it, how different it is because i know we talked about it being a bit more poetic and a bit more you know convocation of this and blah 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 and just wonder if maybe some of that was this artificial this is how i feel uh, i should be yeah um, uh, definitely worth um worth checking out as well um so yeah uh, i mean when i um, was reading louisa's comments as well look i understand as well i mean saying um because we th this is nothing that is kind of new, so to speak. But as as mentioned before, uh, diving into this, um, I mean, it's not even he's not even dwelling. Jed's actually not even dwelling on the DID. So, the the I think it's giving a fresh look and actually adding more 
uh, at, you, know, you know, with this therapy session of diving deeper into the recesses of Mark's mind, I, I just find it fascinating. I think it's great. It's a really cool piece of, um, I don't call it psychology or, or you know, um, what you will, but yeah, I, I just find it really, really interesting. Um, and of course, we've had the things with, with Jeff Lemire, um, with um, with the identities and stuff like that. But this is this is for me new because it's all about, you know, why are you so unhappy? Like, you know, yeah. why is it? Yeah, tell us it's about actually it. actually somebody asking him, like, yeah. what is up? And I, I think it was interesting, like, find out what he thinks about um, Stephen and, and Jake. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, so so thank you so much. I mean, uh, as well, it's it's great to hear all all facets of um, of how this series is being taken. Uh, and, yeah. and you should never feel that you shouldn't give give feedback uh, just because you don't agree with the hive mind as such. Absolutely, absolutely, like, as well. Okay. I mean, I mean, there is a bit of a part of it as well. Like uh, as you say, Rebecca, I mean, the hive mind, but just being so excited and enthusiastic for the character that, yeah. you know, you get yeah. immersed in the story and you just love it, like, innately anyway, um, you, you know, and, and maybe some people are, are a lot more critical uh, and they just want to... It's and, just we all, come at, we all come at these things with different life experiences and different um, expectations. So, we're all, you know, like, you know, and there is a level of excitement from being, like, you know, uh, fans of the character. Mm-hmm. Um but that doesn't, you know, like every opinion is still valid. Oh, absolutely, so, absolutely. You know, e- like even if you want to throw out the most ridiculous suggestions, go for it. You, you see me <laughs> say full killer for everything. I like, <laughs> can't possibly have that. So. See some of Rebecca's comments when she's half asleep uh, on Discord. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. Come on to <laughs> yeah. Discord and see some of my half asleep comments. <laughs> um, no, but thank you, one and all. Thank you, everyone, for sending in feedback. Uh, it, it's really great to. I mean, because we're blessed with such a cool series uh, and the yeah. TV show. It just generated so much interest. A uh, bit, bit of a shout out to the likes of Sweden and Norway, <laughs> who are now apparently listening. So, um, welcome. Welcome, Welcome on board, Scandinavia. Yes. <laughs> Scandinavia. Um, Rebecca, that about wraps it. Thank you so much for, for jumping on again. Um, yeah, thank you for having me again. You know, we've got at least up to issue 12. Hope, touch wood, it goes beyond 12 issues as well. So um, hoping, you know, time permitting that we can uh, we can chat about all those together uh, and then some as well. I mean, you know, the teaser, the TV show, but it's always, yeah, it's always cool to have you over. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, do you want to, any shout outs, Rebecca, are you doing any, I know you're, you know, busy on other podcasts as well. Anything else coming out, uh, soon? Uh, I think, uh, there's probably a DCAU one. Okay. Like, I'm not sure where we are in the release schedule, but our 50th issue episode will be around now with our top five that we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just the DCAU podcast. And I am, I'm doing an Immortal Iron Fist, Sons of the Dragon at the weekend. We're going through the 1980s Heroes for Hire, which has Black Knight and Ooh. White Tiger and Hercules in, uh, and Jim Hammond <laughs> as the head of Oracle. Yeah. So, yeah, so get involved with that as well. Very exciting. New, new Iron Fist series coming out. We talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that will be very interesting to hear. Um yeah. Yeah, very very different. I guess Iron Fist and Moon Knight are at, at very different positions um, now. But uh, yeah, that'll be cool. Check it out, Looney listeners. Uh, Rebecca, Connor, Carl, Omar, uh, and as well as Alan on DCAU. Fantastic, fantastic listening. Again, I'll chuck that in the show notes for you as well for easy reference. Uh, next phase, Looney's look. Um, Russell, uh, our friend of the show, has had so much fun with it. Uh, he's He's put something up uh, for episode 251. It will be an idle chat. We're going to do a little spotlight on Zodiac. Uh, might as well, just to, in case anyone's interested, unfamiliar with the character, we'll give you a little brief run dra- rundown of it, of, of him. Uh, and yeah. That's all you will need. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, yeah, what was it mentioned? It's in five issues, so uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not, not that much. Uh, but it'll be fun to chat with Russell as well. He's, he's, um, you know, he, he's chomping to the bits with uh, with this new villain revealed, so I can't wait. Uh, as always, a big thank you to our Patronis, uh, to the likes of... Oh, actually, a big uh, announcement as well. I'd like to um, thank, of course, Daniel, Drew, Justin, Derek, Kyle, Wayne, Jordan, Josh, James, Anthony, 
Russell and Michael, but a big welcome to Mario, Mario de Giacomo, uh, another Petruni now. So Mario, hopefully, hopefully you'll be enjoying all the uh, the back catalogue back catalog stuff as well as some of the bonus episodes and all the other extra material you get as a Patreon member. Uh, you too can be one if you go to patreon.com slash ITK Moon Knight. Uh, just go check that out and uh, like Mario, see what what little tidbits we have on offer. Um, and it all goes back to the show. Uh, it's, it's a massive thank you to everyone there. Uh, sponsors also CLZ Comics at collectors.com. Uh, go check that out for your database. Get your collection in order. Um, yeah, it's great. It does it for, for music. Blu-rays, movies, TV shows, books. Um, great way to sort out your collection. Uh, Fringe Night by Daniel Doing, as mentioned. If you check out his Patreon page, patreon.com slash Fringe Night 27, Daniel Doing uh, set to release his issue 5, I believe, um, of Fringe Night. It's going great guns. Go check it out. Uh, and other Petrini, Drew Toombs. Now, he's a, a fantastic musician. Toombs on SoundCloud and Lurk Music with a CK on Bandcamp. Go check them both out. Soundcloud.com slash tombs with a Z or Z and uh, and Lurk Music. That is Lurk Music with a CK dot Bandcamp dot com. And finally, Dreamland Comics. If you use the code MOON on their online store, you get 20% off all their back issues. Why not? Go get yourself Dark Rain Zodiac. Uh, and finally, yeah. we're part of yeah, we're part of the collective. Uh, as mentioned, Rebecca's uh, shows uh, are all part of the collective. DCAU, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal and Immortal Iron Fist podcast, and I'll just throw in there as well uh, um, the Ghost Spider Groupies, uh, all about uh, Spider Gwen. Oh, they'll be very excited today. Oh, why? They just announced a new a new series. Oh, did they? Wow. Yeah, Spider Gwen's. Oh my god! I've got to get online after this show and just read it. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome! Far out. Oh, they'll be they'll be yeah through the roof. Uh, check it's it all out. That you just pulled off the top of your head there because like they will literally be having wow the best day. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, well, congratulations to to Pax and <laughs> Abigail there. I'm sure they're they're uh, celebrating there. That's awesome. Awesome news. But um, check it all out. Uh, there's a link to the collective in our show notes. Finally, email us at feedback at itkmoonot.com. We've got a website itkmoonot.com, and we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Discord, blah blah blah, social media, except for TikTok. I, I still can't work that out i think i'm too old too old <laughs> the only for that. tiktok thing i've got is my cat so like, <laughs> don't want to go there uh, um, but yeah um, other than that loonies enjoy enjoy the week enjoy your comics it's been great uh going through this with you rebecca um have a great, always great. week rest of the week weekend coming up yeah always good and uh with that loonies may country watch over the denizens of the night catch you later bye Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.